Okay, so in this problem we're dealing with proportions, and they ask us to first use the interchange property, right, and then apply the subtraction property to that new proportion. So there are many properties of proportions. Let's just go over, um, I guess, the the common names of some of them, the intuition, and really why you don't need to memorize any of them. Um, so what I'm going to do is recreate these properties by setting up a simple proportion, let's say uh, 2 over 4 equals 3 over 6, so you know, a half equals a half. And then I'm going to, you know, even if you were guessing almost at what the interchange property is referring to, you could imagine it must have something to do with moving around these these numbers, right? Well, the and that's exactly right. I mean, you're you're moving around the terms to create an equal proportion, right? So what can we do? What can we move here? Um, well, let's swap six and two, right? Let's swap those, in, let's interchange those and see what, what happens. Well, then I would get what? I would get six, right, over four equals three over two. And here, notice these are still equal. So I can interchange my terms that way. And, you know, are there other ways we can interchange terms? Let's just, let's just see. Let's just play with it. Could I also interchange these two terms right here? Well, if I did that, I would get what? I would get 2 over 3 equals 4 over 6, which is equal. And here you notice that another property of a, these proportions, that these fractions here are reciprocals sometimes referred to as the upside down property or the reverse somehow but I would say these are reciprocals right and here that just is saying if you flip the fractions upside down in both proportions instead of you know instead of 3 over 2 we have 2 over 3 instead of 6 over 4 we have 4 over 6 you have equivalent um, you have equivalent proportions now what about the subtraction property well, sometimes the subtraction property is also referred to as addition and the idea is that here, if we have 2 over 4, and we add 1 to this side, right, which would be 4 over 4, that would equal what? Well, on the right-hand side, we have 3 over 6, but we want to add 1 as well, so we add 6 over 6. And this just goes back to the basic balancing of equations. You know, if 2 over 4 and 3 over 6 are equivalent, well, if we add 1 to the left and then add 1 to the right, we still get equivalent um, equivalent values. So here we have 6 over 4 equals 9 over 6, right? So here, right, here what's interesting I think is that um, the, these, are, these are both equal because what we did is add 1 to both sides. Well, subtraction property, of course, works in a similar way if we subtract 1 from each side. So 4 over 4 equals 3 over 6 minus 6 over 6. So here we have negative 2 fourths equals negative 3 sixths. So negative 1 half here equals negative 1 half, and that's equal. But notice the, you know, what's happening in all these scenarios. Well, in the first scenario, we still have equivalents, but we have different, right, different fractions on both sides. We still have an equivalent proportion. Same thing here. It's still equivalent, but notice it's very different. So we can, in fact, we're changing these fractions as we go. So here they want us to apply the interchange property. Oops, I was just reading it there. It's, so it's A over B equals 4 over 7. So let's interchange A and 7, right? And I guess if you're thinking, oh, we could do that or, or the other way of interchanging, so in this case, we'll interchange B and 4, and this one A and 7. And we should get reciprocals, remember. So if I swap A and 7, I get 7 over B, right? I move 7 up here, equals 4 over A. Down here, I get what? Well, I get A over 4 equals what? Well, we're swapping B and 4, so B over 7. And there you can see the reciprocals. And now the subtraction property. Now the subtraction property, again, you might hear they're saying subtract one from both sides, but really you can subtract anything from both sides. 
Um, and you might see it written like this. If you have a over b equals c over d, well, then the subtraction property says what? Well, a plus b over b equals c plus d over d, right? I should say plus or minus for addition and subtraction, sorry. Plus or minus. Okay, so that sounds really confusing, I think. But, you know, think about what we just did in each of these cases. When I did 2 over 4 here, um, plus 4 over 4, plus 1, notice that by because I'm adding 1, I'm just adding the denominator 4 here over itself. So that, right, is being added to 2, and that matches our denominator here. So we have a over b, we really can do is a plus b, and have it be over b. On the right-hand side, we do 3 plus 6, really, right? But this that matches our denominator down here, and it will be over 6. And same thing with subtraction, just a plus or minus b over b, and c plus or minus d over d. But here, when we apply it, um, these two will be slightly different, right? In this one, I'll have 7 minus b over b equals 4 minus a over a. And here, I'll have the reciprocal of that a minus 4 over 4 equals b minus 7 over 7. So here, um, right, we, we have two possible answers. I would say, I think you go for that one or this one. And I, I, as far as I can tell, there is no specific way of naming the different types of interchanges you can make in a proportion. But all right, hope this helped.